Happy Sabbath. It's lovely to be here. It really is. It's beautiful. And uh, we have a lot of visitors with us this morning, and we have someone from New Zealand too, and a family there that we knew back in New Zealand. And when we arrived here only a few months ago, we learnt that they were connected to Carl, and so we, we, we met up again, and it's, it's wonderful. Um, I, I've been down at Stewart's Point at the campground because uh, this year is not a Howard Christmas. This year was the in-law Christmas, and so it was a Redmond Christmas, not a Howard Christmas. And so I went down there, and um, while we were there, we, we, we got chatting, and on Christmas Day, we sort of had Secret Santa and that sort of thing. And, and um, as we were there, I just started to reflect on who was there. And uh, one of the in-laws' son-in-laws was a guy I met in 1991 in Ata in the Solomon Islands when he had just graduated from radiology. And he was out there helping to install an X-ray machine. Little, does, little do I know that a little later he marries one of the sisters of whom my son married. And uh, so then across from me was another young guy. Well, he wasn't young in now, but he used to be young. <laughs> and I used to know him in Christchurch. I became an Adventist in 1969. In 1970, I started preaching as a lay evangelist. And there were six of us in Christchurch who every year would run a lay evangelistic outreach program. Well, it was this fellow's father that I used to preach with. And so it's just amazing. I, got to know, I knew some of the people that were there on the Christmas Day even before they were part of the Redmond family. But it's just amazing how God works and how God connects people and that's the joy of who we are, one of the beautiful privileges. But today I'm happy that you're here because you're in the house of the Lord. You're here as we celebrate um, communion service. Now, I had a birthday uh, just the other week and um, one of the gifts that the church gave me was this Bible. And um, this morning I thought, good, I'll use the Bible. That was my, my gift. You know what I did? My sermon notes are in my other Bible <laughs> sitting on the bench at home. So folks, you have no idea what you're going to get because I don't know what I'm going to preach. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. God is good. He, he, he puts all of this stuff in our head. And this morning I've simply called our message once. Once. We are here because once something very beautiful happened. Mind you, it was ugly. It was an unexpected. It was a, yeah, a, a very cruel thing that happened. But fortunately, it only had to happen once. And Jesus, we have uh, all this counsel in Scripture that tells us the beauty of what Jesus did. And when we look into the Old Testament, it tells us that there were daily sacrifices. For 4,000 years, there were sacrifices. In the Garden of Eden, there was a sacrifice. And from that moment every day, there were sacrifices until something happened. And today, because of that something that happened, we don't sacrifice. An end was put to sacrifices. And when we open scripture, and particularly if we open, first of all, to, to the book of Romans, as Paul is bringing to the people the beauty of the gospel of Jesus Christ, he's, he's setting down some beautiful foundations. And here in Romans chapter 6, verse 10, he says something very beautiful. He says something once, that something happened once. And in Romans 6, verse 10, we read this. For the death that he died, 
talking of Jesus Christ. He died to sin once. What for? All. Yeah, not for himself. Jesus died a death once for all. And as he was sitting with his disciples in the upper room prior to his death, he said to them, he said, look, I'm I'm going to break this bread, which is my body. I'm going to give you a cup of grape juice, which is my blood. And he said to them, I want you to do this as often as you can. So even though Jesus died once for the sins of all, there is something that we must do, but we cannot just do it once because we're sinners, because we struggle to live life as Jesus lived. We struggle to live a sinless life. Jesus only died once because he was sinless. And that is the beauty of why we are here today. Because if Jesus did not die that death once, and if it were not sufficient, then we could not be here at all. We might as well not be here. But because Jesus' sacrifice was sufficient, it only needed to be once. He died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. And so we have this beautiful picture, and if we go to the book of Hebrews for a moment, and particularly into Hebrews chapter 9 and 10, We'll just look at a few thoughts that help us to understand the significance of Christ once being our sacrifice, of once being our sin bearer. And when we come to Hebrews chapter 9, we find too that we must die. But when we die once, it's to life. We die a natural death. After we die, there is no significance to us, unlike Christ. Christ's death was once, it was sufficient, it was for all. But when it tells us in in Hebrews chapter 9, it tells us what we do in Hebrews 9, 27. And as it is appointed for men to what? Die once. We can't die twice. We can only die once. When we give up that breath of life, we are subject to judgment and nothing else. That's it. The life you live before death predetermines or sets in motion how your judgment will be. So we die once, but we die to death. But Jesus Christ died once to life. And because of the death of Jesus being that sufficient sacrifice, we can enjoy a future beyond that death of judgment. Look at verse 28. So Christ was what? Once offered to bear what? The sins of many. This is why we can be here. This is why you and I can be here because Christ died once to bear the sins of many. All, actually, who want the choice, who wants to make the choice to follow Christ, it is sufficient for all, but not all will embrace it. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and to those who eagerly wait for him, he will appear what? A second time. How can he appear a second time? Well, it's because he was resurrected. It's because his, his sacrifice was sufficient and pleasing to God that because of his sinless, sinlessness, the grave could not hold him. And so he was resurrected to life and is now in the presence of the Father and will one day come a second time, but not to die. 
He does not come to die. Hebrews 9.28 tells us that he comes a second time apart from sin for salvation. Oh, Jesus only had to die once. And we are blessed and we are privileged because of that one time death of Christ. Let's just move down a little bit into Hebrews chapter 10. Verse 12. But this man, Christ Jesus, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever. Wow. After he had offered one sacrifice. He sat down at the right hand of God. We come to the table today because the emblems that we have here are the emblems of somebody, are the emblems of a Jesus Christ who, because of sinlessness, is able to go into the presence of the Father. And because he is seated there, we can come here. Beautiful, isn't it? That once Christ had to do it and not a multitude of times. Look at verse 10. But that, by that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus. How often? Once. Once. Jesus' death is sufficient for us once. Yeah. You don't have to wake up in 10 years' time and, and say that you want Jesus to be your saviour if you've already said it today. He is yours. You only need to make that decision once in your lifetime that he is your redeemer, that he is your saviour, that he is everything that you want him to be. It doesn't matter what you do between now and then. Yes, you can commit sin, but it does not stop Jesus from being your saviour. He does not have to die again. He only has to die. He only had to die once to save us. That's amazing. I don't have to go out in the paddock and get a lamb. No, I don't. Because Jesus is my lamb. Jesus is my sacrifice. Jesus is my everything. So yes, we accept Jesus once for our salvation. Come to verse 14 of Hebrews 10. For by one offering, he has done what? He has perfected those who are being sanctified forever. Oh, friends, don't leave here today with doubt dragging you down and holding you back. Believe it as you leave here that this Christ, the one of whom these emblems represent, has already perfected you because he has been accepted by the Father. In Revelation chapter 4 and 5, we're told that there was great weeping in heaven because who would be able to deliver this earth from its sinfulness. And the elders, the ones who knew, the ones who had lived upon this earth, knew that the one who was slain was worthy to complete the work of God. Oh, what a privilege. This text you should have underlined. This text should be a... a uh, a text on your fridge this coming year for 2020 because I believe it says the most powerful message of all of Scripture. For by one offering he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. That's where we fit, folks, into that word sanctified. Through taking of the emblems of this that, that, that represent the once only sacrifice of Christ, you and I are being made holy. 
as one who can dwell in the presence of God because our Jesus, the bearer of these emblems, is there. And because of that, we have these wonderful privileges that are ours. I want you to know that 2020 is going to be a good year because of what Jesus has done. Not because of what you are going to do. Because of what Jesus has done. 2020 is going to be a good year. So what do you do? If Christ died once, what do you need to do? Let's look at a few texts. Let's look at Luke chapter 9. Chapter 9, verse 23 of Luke. Here we have Jesus talking, talking to his people. And he says to them, in Luke 23, where he is talking to his disciples, he's called them out, he's sending out the twelve, he's commissioning them to go preach, and he gives to them the very basic formula of their success. Are you successful in your journey with Christ? Are you successful in life? Have you embraced, have you embraced the most basic principle of life if you want the best? Here it is, right here. Luke 9, 23. Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. What? Christ had to do it once. We have to do it daily. There's the secret to life. Okay? Christ was good enough. Christ was sinless enough that he only had to die once. But no, we're not like Jesus. We don't have that capability. We don't have that power. We don't have that wisdom. We don't have that energy. We are sinners, corrupted by sin. And if we want to make the most of life every day, we need to die daily and take up his cross and follow him. For it is his sacrifice that saves us. It is his sacrifice that makes us holy. It is his sacrifice that causes us to appreciate our value. It's in that once only death of Christ that we see our value. Jesus would die for me? Wow. Doesn't that make you yeah, feel special? That somebody would die for you. Yeah. You know, I gave my granddaughter a $50 Christmas present and he, she just lit up. It was a pair of shorty pyjama pants from Peter Alexandra that had dash hounds on it. She just loves the things. There's one that sleeps on a bed every night. And I would kick it. It's the worst creature I've seen. It eats everything. It does. I think I've already had to buy three pair of jandals or thongs because of the stupid dog. But she loves it. And just because I gave her this pair of fancy shorty pajama pants, she just lit up. I wish we'd do that when we saw Jesus. Hey? Yeah. We need to get excited about Jesus. And this is why we should get excited about Jesus. Come with me to Matthew chapter 6, where Jesus again is, is teaching the disciples because they asked him a question. They said, Jesus... Teach us to pray. Teach us to be like you. Teach us to communicate uh, with our Father like you do. And so Jesus said to them, as we pray, when he was teaching us to pray, he said to say to the Father, give us this day our what? Daily bread. Here's the emblem. Here's the bread. The bread is Christ. 
The bed, the bread, is the body of Christ. The bread is that which represents the life of Jesus Christ. So when we pray to the Father, we should ask the Father to give us our daily bread. Give us our sustenance in Jesus Christ. Because it's that which gives us life. Oh yeah, I can go to Baker's Delight and I can pay $4.20 for my favourite loaf of bread and get very excited when I put the butter and the marmite on it and chew on this piece of very fresh bread. There's nothing that gets me going like fresh, the smell of fresh cooked bread. Yeah. Man, I want to get that excited about Jesus. Because that loaf of bread, that slice of bread is only going to keep me going for a couple of hours. But this Jesus, this bread, this broken body will keep me going for eternity. Wow, isn't that a beautiful thing? So Jesus says to us, yeah, just don't do it once. Do it daily. Ask God daily. And then we come to this passage of Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 where Paul is, is, is saying to this people how he finds success with his life. And in 1 Corinthians 15 verse 31 we have Paul saying this. Paul didn't have an easy life. Paul had a very difficult journey, a very challenging journey. It never got him down. He, he was a positive individual and had all sorts of afflictions, all sorts of crises happen in his life. But as he is summing up to the people of Corinthians in his letter, he says, I affirm by the boasting in you which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, he said what? I die daily. I die daily. Friends, if you want the most out of life, if you want the most out of 2020, if you want to have a rich and satisfying life, it's because Christ died once that we can have everything. But it won't be ours unless we die daily. I just want God to help you to die daily because you can't do it on your own. I can't do it. I struggle to do it. It's a personal challenge that I have. I am a self-sufficient individual. I can look after myself. I can protect myself. I can do most things. And that's my weakness. That's my challenge to say there is something in life I can't do. And the one thing I can't do is I can't save myself. Because even if I were to die, I would die a sinner. And that would not save me. But that's what's supposed to happen to me, isn't it? The wages of sin is death. I'm supposed to die. But God loves me too much to allow me to die. He wants me to live. And so Jesus Christ the unique one, the begotten of the Father, died for me once. And if I come to him daily and die to him, the promise is I'm going to have an abundant life now and I'm going to have an eternal life when he comes. One opens the door for the other. I want that to be your experience. I want you to know that you can have every confidence in Jesus Christ because we sit here. When he talked to the disciples in the upper room after having introduced them to the table, he said, guys, do this as often as you can. This is one of the important things we must do is to do this, take the emblems of the broken body of Christ, of the spilt blood of Christ, take them as often as we can because they will remind us of the once only death of Jesus. And as we do that, we will die to self, we will die 
to, yeah, ourselves, our challenge, and we will be able to be raised up in the newness of life in Jesus Christ. May that be your blessing and privilege of 2020.